Now we're ready to program showing and hiding an image. It's a lot like showing the overlay with a couple of differences. When we want to animate showing and hiding of an element with certain transformations, we need to use the timeout function. I'm also going to show you how to create new HTML elements at well. The first thing we need to do is to tell our program where the high resolution versions of our images are. You can see that I have an SRC tag right here that shows where the thumbnails are, but I need to add information to this image tag to show the program where the high resolution versions of the images are. So I'm going to replace this code. And in this new version, you can see that I have added a new tag to each list element image tag. See another one right here. And it's essentially just where the high resolution versions of the images. I have named them exactly the same as the low resolution versions, except without the underscore TN. Now, before I was executing this function called show image, and I wasn't really passing it any information. Since now we want to pass the information about the high resolution versions, we're going to add the keyword this on each show image to make sure that we pass the information about which item was clicked. So when we click on each one of these thumbnails, it's going to let the program know which thumbnail we clicked on. So we'll need to come here to our show image function and add a variable that will catch which thumbnail was clicked on and pass the information about the high resolution version of the image. We'll store the name of the high resolution version of the image and a special variable can see that we can tell the program to get an attribute from within an element. So as we're passing the entire information about the image tag through this original image variable here, over here, we're accessing an attribute within that image tag. So we can actually access any attribute within an image tag or any other tag by using this get attribute method. Just as before with the overlay, we need to tell the program where we want the image to be. So we're storing the location of where we want the image to go inside this variable. We want the location to be the overlay. So it's going to put an image inside this overlay that we've created. Here, we're creating an HTML element from scratch. We're using the method called create element to add an IMG tag to our document. We're also setting the SRC tag of this image element to be the location of the high resolution image. In this piece of code, we're adding the new element that we have created to the document. Just because you create an element doesn't mean that it goes anywhere on the page. We need to make sure that we append our element to the insert location to make sure that the program knows where in the document the element is going to go. As you can see, when we click on an element, it shows the element. And if we click on it again, it hides it. However, if we click on an element more than one time, you'll see that more than one element comes up. That's because we're not getting rid of elements. We're just continuing to add them to the document. So we need to make sure we write something to get rid of the elements once they're clicked on in the overlay. In the place in our program where we are getting rid of the overlay, we're also getting rid of the new image by removing the element that we created at the insert location where we've placed it. Now, when we click on elements more than once, it won't continuously add them to the document. It'll get rid of them as soon as the overlay is destroyed. We want to make the appearing and disappearing of the images a little more interesting. So we're going to add some styles. So we have added three styles to our document. One for the image when it's inside the overlay. That way it won't affect the thumbnails. And this has a transition and a transformation to make sure that it animates. And it sets the opacity of the original image at 0.5, which is just very, very transparent. Next, when somebody clicks on the image, we're going to apply this style that shows the image. So it's going to scale it to 100% of its original size, and it's going to make it totally opaque. And then when we click on it again, we want to go back and scale it to nothing and change the opacity again. So these are just three styles that will help us when we want to show the image 
after the overlay appears and hide it after we're done with it. Now, when we add the image, we've changed here the class name of the image to show it. However, if you click on the image, it's not really gonna use that transformation because of the way the image is loading in the browser. It's actually loading way too quickly for that animation to be viewable. So we need to add a timeout function that will delay the showing of the image so that it has time for the animation to play. So here's what a timeout function looks like. It looks like a normal method with a function inside it. In this function, we are telling the browser that we wanna hold off in showing the image to 100 milliseconds. And after that 100 milliseconds, we're gonna apply that style to it. That should be just enough time to show the animation happening. So as you can see, the animation for showing the image is happening now. However, when you click on the image to hide it, that animation doesn't play. So we'll need to take care of that as well. We're going to replace the part where the overlay gets clicked on to handle that hiding of the image by adding a similar piece of code to the showing of the image. Here we're applying the class name of hide it to the image and setting up a timeout function that slows down the removal of the image. In this case, we're actually slowing down the removal of the image, not the showing of it. Because if we don't put this timeout function here, the image will be removed before it has time to play the animation. As you can see now, the images show the two animations. Now I'm gonna do a last bit of cleanup here because we're really no longer worried about clicking on the overlay. We have images that we can target when they show up here. So I'm gonna change this piece of code that checks to see if the overlay has been clicked on to just check to see if an image has been clicked on. It's a little bit easier to read to. And it works in a very similar way. We've learned a lot of important concepts here, how to create elements dynamically and how to work with the lane animations in order to show them properly. Now we're ready to start working on building a gallery.